We'll help them. I think when you go a long time without helping people, I think you'll find it a little bit more difficult to help them because you, you don't been used to not really being burdened with other people's troubles. You keep yourself away from people. You stay in your own lane. You ain't really had to do nothing for nobody like that. Besides give a dude in front of the video store five dollars or something when he begging you or something. He's standing outside the co-op. Now I ain't giving you no money, man, but I come in here, man. I'll I I'll buy you uh you know, you felt good about it, kept it moving. But what about when somebody needs somewhere to stay? What about when somebody whole family is in the rudder? Whether it's somebody in the church or whether it's people who not in the church, but you know them and they know you and you know their situation. What kind of decision do we make? It's not always easy, and an individual can only do so much. What do we do? It's not always an easy answer, but go ahead. Look at this. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 3 through 8. Go ahead. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity it profiteth me nothing so if you gave everything you had ain't that what ain't that what they didn't ask for didn't we read that every nobody said what they had was their own but they put it all in one pot and had all things in common ain't that people taking everything they got and bestowing it okay so what if you so you, how is it possible to do that without love I, you didn't think that was possible but Paul's saying, yo, that's possible. It's possible to make that community move. But ain't no love there. For real? How is it possible? You know why it seems impossible? Because we're thinking as man. But we're not talking about a man thing here right now. This is an omnipotent spirit that is trying to convey to man something. There are arterial motives in men that we always don't see. And there is the deep recesses of a man's soul and conscience that only the word of God is able to get deep enough to chop it up and expose it. Our pride in trying to find it out won't. There are people, there could be people among you who actually do not have the love that's necessary, but they don't put everything on the table. Because this is what we got to do for the poor. That's an outward show, just like paying tithes is. But we don't equate it because we like, well, that's everything I got. Well, brothers and sisters, I'll tell you this, and I'll be honest. Sometimes I don't cat didn't ask me for something. All I had in my pocket was $18. Look, man, here. This is all I got. But I gave it to him so I could get props for that. I'll get $18 again real quick, I think. Would you need that 18 Here, man, take that 18 I don't get that man to, man, I get that man a shirt off my back. Yeah, so that next time we in a crowd of people, you could gloat about how I gave you the shirt off my back. What kind of glory you think I got coming when people find out I gave you the shirt off my back? Y'all don't think people think like that? I gave you the shirt off my back and the last money in my pocket so that next time you could let you could let people know how I get down. So if you come in to do this thing because you want some kind of glory from men, then it's not going to be of any glory to the Father. See, if we do it for his glory, then he will be pleased. So are we doing it for his glory or are we doing it for our own glory? Do we want the congregation of Israel named to ring bells? Do we want the organizational name that's on a, what's that, a DBA? Is that how you do it? Or not for profit? Whatever, whatever kind of paperwork it is. Not for profit paperwork. When people hear the name congregation of Israel, we doing it so our name can ring bells in the street? Is we doing it so that the old class we come from can grovel in our being proven to be the, <laughs> the true servants of Yah? You, I'm telling you, the mind is deceitful. 
Sometimes you want people to just feel it, like, oh. Uh. I hope that that's not what it's about. I'm hoping that it's about the kingdom of God and a will that's been put in us that we can deny no more. And no matter who, who, and no matter who appreciates it, so what? No matter who likes it, so what? It just must be done because this is the hour in which the Father is gathering his children. And he wants us to put on a demonstration of his love just as he got it going on in other places of the earth for a witness of his truth. Brother, continue to read. Charity, su charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity enveyeth not envieth excuse me envieth not <laughs> charity uh vaunteth vaunteth not itself. vaunteth not itself is not puffed up doeth not do do if not behave itself unseemly seeketh not her own is not easily provoked thinketh no evil rejoiceth not in iniquity, and, but rejoiceth in the truth. So, look. Look what you just read. It said that that charity doesn't vaunt itself mm. and that charity what? Is not puffed up. Is not puffed up. So, now notice, not you, but this is what love is and isn't. Don't let the outer shell of the human being you deal with determine if there's love there or not. You got some, you like, 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 like take parenting for instance. You got some parents who are a little bit loose, a little bit more carefree. They speak soft, never riled up. Then you got some parents who more on it. They more vocal, more louder. Can you really prove that one parent has love for their child more than the other because of their because of the character of the parent like just who they naturally are you got a parent who always joking around and funny and like to play with their kids and another parent who's strict and more serious can the strict one prove they love their child more than the counterpart who was more easy yeah the kid feel they could go talk to this parent like because man Dad or, and if dad the easy one, well, man, mom going, I know mom. If you try to get away from mom, dad might be a little bit more easy going on your side, but he going to be like, your mother has said what? <laughs> well, you can't do it. I mean, <laughs> you know what you want me to say. He can be as easy going as he want to be, but still loves his child. She can be as strict as she want to be and still love her child. So what I'm saying is you can't let the the natural character that God has given all of us, that's not what this is talking about here. It's talking about what's in a person deeply that no matter what their personal character is, the result is going to always be the same. In the church, you got a whole bunch of different kind of people. It's like a vegetarian trying to prove that they're healthier than somebody who eat chicken. I mean, Really? You can prove that? You mean to tell me the only people that live to be 100 eat vegetables? <laughs> if, I'm talking about if we're just talking about a carnal flesh and blood health of the body. There was one man they had on the, uh, on the TV. This man was like 115. He said, yeah. They was asking him, what is the secret? He said, well, yeah, man. He said, I like my steak and my chicken. He said, I just... I just, he said when I was, he said, yeah, back when I was 85, <laughs> I changed the portions of my meal. He said, people in America just eat too much these days. He said, I, I, I eat what I want, but I just eat less. So he said, my, I think my secret would be stop eating so damn much. That's actually what he said at 115. So he telling you 30 years ago, I just changed my, por my portion size. But they eat me back when I was 85. That's like me saying, man, back when I was like 15. <laughs> he talking about 85 back, like being back in the day. 
He was 85 back in like 75. It's all back when I was 85, I changed my portions. But I went through that to say, look, this man, 115 years old, and he eat meat. So can a vegetarian prove that they're going to live longer than somebody who eat meat? Of course not. And that's the same way you can't prove that just because this person character is like this and that person character is like this, that somehow one is better than other. I didn't heard people try to pit the teachers against each other. This teacher right here, man, is abrasive. This teacher right here is quiet. This teacher right here is jolly. This teacher right here is very inquisitive. Well, we won. So why not look at it like you got four different kind of emotions in one instead of trying to separate us as four like we not one? Because if you committed adultery, that abrasive, intellectual, jolly going quiet oneness is going to be like, you dead wrong. So did it matter what our individual characters were or did we all have the same judgment according to what thus saith the Lord? We all had the same judgment. So love is going to always be the same no matter what package it comes in. And this is how we will know if there is love in what we are attempting to do. Go ahead and continue to finish that off. Uh, I'm going to start over from six again. Okay. Uh, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. So when you see no matter what a person's character is, they do not have any pleasure in sin, but they rejoice in truth and it was right. Go ahead. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. Okay. This is what love is. And so you hope to see love in people. I'm trying to work it out and perceive the love in all of you. And hopefully you the same in me. It bears all things. It don't vaunt itself. It's not puffed up. So if you give all your goods to feed the poor, but you don't have the ability in you to suffer long and be kind and not to envy. So what if you're part of the community and you envying? Wasn't Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, the son of Reuben, weren't they in the community of Israel? Didn't they have position coming out of Egypt? And didn't they envy after Moses and Aaron? And didn't Moses feel bad like, man, why y'all doing this? Like, don't y'all got enough that the Lord has separated y'all? Y'all want to take the priesthood too? So you can be in a community and still be envious. Love ain't there. So you done gave all your goods to feed the poor, but all this envy in you is killing that and making it nothing. You can't bear with nothing. You can't believe nothing because it's taking too long for you. Or you don't like what such and such said or they did. Now, remember, I'm not talking about who you are as an individual. Everybody got their little quirkiness. You know what I mean? I'm silly and you energetic. <laughs> but if we have the love of God in us, do you know no matter what our personal character is at the end of the day, the love in you is still going to bear all things that we got to bear through in order for us to walk right. Even on the silly dude, still, the love in me is going to bear all things that it takes for us. So everyone's character, no matter what it is, the love of God, his mercy and his faith in you is still going to get the same result. People look so much at our individual character that they're not even looking for Christ because they have mistaked me for being Christ. No, you have to look for Christ in me. Don't look at my every single motion as one because you're going to find something that's not Christ. Possibly. And then you're going to claim Christ isn't there because you're not look, you don't because you're looking for Christ with your ear after what your ears hear and after what your eyes see. But Christ didn't do things according to what his ears saw and I mean his ears heard and his eyes saw. He judged him according to judgment and the spirit in him. So judge it according to the spirit of him in you. Now let us move on, brother. Let's go to Deuteronomy 25. He said we lack judgment, mercy, and faith. That's what he told them Pharisees, right? 
And, he, and, and in Luke 11 and 42, he said, you have put off judgment and the love of God. 